What can we achieve by adding conversion lenses and various filters to an iPhone 12 Pro Max? When we have a top-range smartphone like this, do we still need conversion lenses? Well, maybe. Let's have a look. Oh, uh, by the way, I discovered using the anamorphic lens D-Squeeze in an app like Filmic Pro might not be the best option. But I'll get to why that is later in the video. This is an iPhone 12 Pro Max with the Moment Thin Case, a Moment Gold Anamorphic, a Moment 67mm filter mount, and on that I've placed a Tiffin Black Pro Mist 1 8th and a KNF Variable ND filter. Adding lenses and filters to your smartphone isn't always that simple. Do I use a case or a grip rig thing? It's kind of fiddly and it's not really that cheap. And these cameras are great, so why bother? Well, there's two reasons. The first reason is that the main wide sensor is by far the better quality. With the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the sensor is bigger. It has sensor shift stabilization. It's better in low light. When I switch to the tele or the ultra wide lenses, in low light I get a lot more noise. Therefore it makes sense to use a conversion lens over the main lens instead of switching lenses. The second reason is that they add character. Digital images can be very cold and clinical. That's why cinematographers often go to great lengths to add character, with filters and various lenses. Those aberrations and tiny flaws in the lens actually make the digital image more interesting. They kind of rough it up a bit. They make it more human somehow. And anamorphics have some of the most distinct characteristics of all the conversion lenses. That's why Sean Baker used one for his breakout feature, Tangerine. It was the Moondog Labs anamorphic which persuaded him he could shoot something very special with an iPhone 5. Now that CGI software is getting better at dealing with anamorphic footage, these lenses have made a resurgence in big budget movies for exactly this reason. They give cold digital images some kind of character. I chose the Moment case so I could mount an anamorphic or tele lens to the iPhone 12 Pro Max and also add a filter mount. Moment gives you various options, but this is the thin version. I previously had a thin case for my Samsung S9 and I liked it, so I went for that again. The case goes on quite easily, but the square edges of the device make this a bit more fiddly compared to the Samsung. It's just slightly harder to get on and off. The case comes in two parts, the main case and the lens mount part, which needs to be clipped in. Both of these are quite soft plastic, which makes it more malleable and therefore less likely to snap. Thing is though, I did have the feeling it could easily snap if I wasn't careful. So I was quite cautious inserting the lens mount and also mounting the lenses. My tip here is just take your time and just ease things in slowly when you're using this stuff. But the case is rubbery and grippy and once it's on, it's good. I like it. Moment lenses mount with a bayonet style mechanism. Just push in and twist. At first I just couldn't get the lens mounted because I really didn't want to force it and it just wouldn't turn. So I spent some time examining it to work out how it was supposed to function. And in the end I did actually have to force it a bit, turning it about 90 degrees to lock it in place. I did this so slowly because I felt like it was going to snap off any minute. It would be nice if they included spares of these. I'm sure they don't cost much to make. Anyway, with slow, cautious twisting, I eventually got it in place. And with the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the anamorphic had to be set differently. It needs to be rotated 90 degrees so that the squeeze is lengthways and not from the top to the bottom of the frame. And this is done with the included screw and key. This is actually quite fiddly, so again, go slowly. They do include spare screws at least, in case you lose one. Most of us are familiar with anamorphic conversion lenses for smartphones, but usually they produce a blue flare. So Moment brought out an anamorphic which produces a gold flare. And this is it. Anamorphic lenses are wide lenses that change the characteristics of the frame by only adding a wider field of view sideways. And that's why they have this distinct look. They're curved like a tube rather than a sphere. So why would we want a gold flare instead of a blue one? Well, it's really just another colour in our cinematographer's palette for painting with light. 
Blue is cold and gold is warm, obviously. In general, thrillers, sci-fi films and tech reviews tend to be cold and clinical, whereas romances, feel-good comedies and cooking shows tend to be warm and comforting. Maybe you want to film some sunsets and would rather highlight the orange glow than confuse it with blue streaks. Then again, blue is more of a contrast during a sunset, so they're going to stand out more. So it's really about your creative vision. If you point the camera directly at the light source, you're going to get the biggest flare. But ask yourself, is this too much? Then think about reducing it by altering the frame so that the light isn't in the center. Also, you can play with the flare by moving the camera. Be careful, don't just end up looking at the flare and nothing else. The flare adds an extra level of complexity, so you also need to up your game a bit here. Sometimes we make the mistake of buying an anamorphic lens, and then we go out and film some street lights, and we forget about everything else. You bought this lens to make your video more cinematic, so don't get distracted by lens flares and forget about the main ingredients. I had some fun looking for reflections to use, like this building with brown mirrored windows. Hollywood director J.J. Abrams became notorious for filling his Star Trek movies with lens flares. In fact, he even apologized once for overdoing it. So I've got a few clips here from Star Trek Into Darkness to illustrate what I mean. This movie was actually shot using anamorphic lenses. Not all the flares are created by the lens. Some are added later in post-production but we can also create this effect with any smartphone. All you have to do is add an anamorphic conversion lens. I'm also using the Tiffin diffusion filter to create that extra softness. The brighter the light or lights, the greater the effect. You'll get more exaggerated flares and more light bloom. These flares look great when the subject in the frame is moving across the light source so that the flares kind of flicker and change. As well, you can move the camera to add to this effect. Here I'm just showing you how it works. You need lights that appear in the frame and then have the subject move across the light. See how the Tiffin diffusion filter softens the flare and helps the light spread across the edges of the subject. Cinematographers use this to turn a clinical digital image into something more messy and blurry. It's got, got more life to it. Cinematographers and photographers use ND, or neutral density, filters to enable slower shutter speeds. In daylight, the sun is so bright we can't keep the shutter at 1 over 48 or thereabouts that we need for the film look motion blur. So we need to stop down that light with an ND filter. Now I have the 67mm adapter, I can use a photographer's ND filter rather than the 37mm newer ones I had before. So this is more expensive but better quality. This one only goes up to 32 and I found I needed the next step up to keep the shutter down to 148. So in some of these shots I used a slightly faster shutter. Thing is, unless you have exaggerated movement in the shot, you're probably not going to notice too much unless you use very fast shutter speeds. And then when I watched the footage back, I noticed a problem. In some shots, I got this jelly effect. It's like you're looking through water. The image is getting distorted and my guess is this is down to the anamorphic, which distorts the image in a way which confuses the digital stabilization. Anamorphic lenses can cause problems for digital effects. There is a fix though. Basically, use an app which allows you to switch off stabilization. In Filmic Pro, I found when I switched off stabilization, the problem went away. Of course, it means your footage will be less stabilized. When you're using Filmic Pro D-Squeeze, I found you actually get a smaller image file than if you don't de-squeeze in the app and de-squeeze later. The Filmic Pro 4K de-squeezed file, the file you get at the end, is 4,030 pixels by 1,704, which would give us a total of uh, 6,867,120 pixels, whereas regular 4K is 3840 by 2160 which is 8,294,400 pixels so that's over an extra million pixels which you're going to be discarding when you click that de-squeeze button so if you want to keep that extra image resolution then use an app like filmic pro to remove stabilization don't use the de-squeeze function 
Instead, just de-squeeze in your editing software. In Premiere, for example, it's pretty easy. All you do is go to effects controls for the clip, uncheck uniform scale, and then set height to 75%. Of course, you will end up with the same number of pixels either way. But if you start with more when recording, it can help reduce quality loss when mastering the final video. It's usually best to keep as much image information as you can when editing. Now, this probably doesn't make a huge difference on its own, but when you add all these little things together, you get a better final image quality. That's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next video.